Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we just, I just want to give everyone another minute to join. Um, I can see a lot of people are joining right now and trying to dial in. So let's just wait for another minute and uh, then we get started. Okay, I would say, I mean, I, I still see people joining, but you know, because of time, let's just get started. Um, welcome everyone, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are, you're joining from. Um, my name is Alessandro Wenzer. I have um, Jennifer Schmieder with me today, um, talking about sub Fiori authorizations, lessons learned, best practices. Um, we have prepared a lot of um, educational content, so we, we try to show you as much as we can to, you know, to get a, a good understanding of sub Fiori, authorizations in Fiori, what we have to what we have to know, how we implement sub Fiori, um, and so on. Before we go into the agenda, just a few words about us. Um, like I said, my name is Alessandro Banzer. I'm in charge of the US operations within Exciting. I'm a senior security consultant, mainly in the area of um, access control, GRC, sub IHE, S4HANA, and Fiori authorizations, migrations to S4HANA, and so on, so everything around authorizations, GRC, access control, um, and you know security in general. And uh, Jenny, you wanna say a few things about yourself? Yes, <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, my name is Jennifer Schmieder. I am a senior security consultant um, by the Exciting in Switzerland, and I have a lot of experience for the migration of S4HANA projects and also for the um, creation of um, theory authorization concepts. And uh, today, yeah, I'm more in the background and <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so I'll be I'll be doing the primary talking. If you guys have any questions, maybe just a, a few housekeeping rules before we get started. Um, we're using GoToWebinar. Um, you have a control panel where you can, um, you know, we have a chat box there. So if you have any questions, um, just type them into the chat box. Um, Jennifer will try to answer them as, as I talk. If there's anything important for the entire group that we want to answer, we might have time in the end, or maybe Jennifer will just interrupt myself and then you know raise a question. We try to answer it um, as we go along. But please use the um, the control panels. We have a, a full house today, so we have everyone muted. Um, you, you cannot unmute yourself, so we just have to you know to keep it. Otherwise, it will be very noisy, so we keep it quiet. If you have any question, just use the the, the chat box. You can also do um, a raise your hand. So if you have any question, just raise your hand, and um, and then we will see if if something is unclear. We try to rephrase. Um, during the presentation, I'll switch off my camera just so you have the, the, the full view of, of my screen because we have a lot of slides, a lot of content. So I'll just switch it off now, but we can uh, switch it back on later as well if you, if you guys want to see me again. All right, just give me a second. Perfect. Um, just a few words about Exciting. Um, we're a sub-security um, company. We're, we've been founded in 2008 back in Switzerland. We're still headquartered in Switzerland. We have um, 80 plus employees all over the world. We have offices, big locations in Germany, in Switzerland, in England, in Romania, and also here in, in, in the United States. So I, I myself, I'm, I'm based in Tampa, Florida, um, and we, you know, we came over to the United States in 2016 to kind of also provide our services, um, you know, here in, in, in the Americas region. Um, all of our senior consultants are also SAP trainers, so we have a very strong relationship with SAP. We're a sub-silver partner. We have recognized expertise in GRC, data uh, security, um, authorizations, and so on. But then also we have a very strong relationship with sub-education. That means if you book an SAP training like ADM 940, ADM 945, those you know the admin training courses for authorization, singles and on, GRC and so on, it's very likely that you're going to talk to one of, of our employees that are you know on staff which is exciting, but they're used as, a, as an SAP trainer, um, you know, when you book an SAP training. Um, and that's, that, that, you know, gives us a unique opportunity to always be up on top with, you know, the latest content, knowledge, and that's what we're trying to do today as well. So we want to give you an overview about Fiori authorization. So from the agenda today, 
Um, just a few words about S for HANA. A lot of people always say when you know Fiori is something I have to do when when I when I when I implement S for HANA or when I migrate to S for HANA. So we just want to shed some light um, around that. But then we want to really want to go specifically into Fiori. So what is the content? What is how does the launchpad look like? How do we authorize end users in Fiori? Um, what are the tools available? There's a lot of tools that um been there for a while. There's a lot of new tools that are um, now you know, being pushed by SAP, like the content manager, the app manager, the launchpad designer, different tools. We want to give you a very good overview so you know what needs to be done in which tool and what's the intention of the tool. We'll be talking about the um, Fiori apps library where we can find all the, you know, the, um, the Fiori apps that are available. There's more than 12,000 of them that are available. And from the apps library, we get a lot of knowledge of how can we implement um, the, app, the app I know for our end users and then also a little bit an outlook in the future there's a lot of uh, things going on especially with s for hana 2020 um which um is the latest s for hana release there's you know new developments that also you know impact fiori in today's um webinar it's more an overview so we want to give you all the fundamentals and you know make sure everyone's on the same page and then we have um, follow-up webinars where we go specifically into more details you know, when it comes to the content manager. Today, we just want to show you on an overview at a high level what the content manager can do, what we can achieve there. But then in the next session, we really want to go into, the, into depth for a content manager, launchpad design, the different applications, how do we do certain things in the system. So that's you know, follow-up webinars that we have scheduled as well. All right. So before we get started and go into Fiori, like I said, I just want to talk briefly about um, S for HANA. S for HANA is a big, a big topic right now. Every company um, is either, you know, considering moving to S for HANA, is in the process of a migration, or, or maybe is already on S4. So S for HANA basically is a new product line. It will be our uh, center of, of of the data world. So going forward, S for HANA will be very important. We have to sooner or later we have to upgrade or migrate um, to S4. So if you're you know, running on ERP, um, you know, we will run out of out of maintenance, and then the next step will be the S4. With S4, there's a change in architecture and also change in the data model. What that basically means is that SAP tries to simplify um, and 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 um, consolidate, um, you know, redundant applications or applications and things that today in, in ERP we were able to do through different applications, which means you know, different transactions. Um, and so on. So like, for example, here on the right hand side, I have an example in, in ERP traditionally to register a vendor invoice, we can do that through the module MM and we can do that through the module FI. So there's two different modules. In either module, there's different transactions that allow us to register vendor invoices. In S for HANA, there's only one solution available that's called invoice management. So it's a consolidation of application of functionality that will happen as part of S4. With S4, so when we upgrade to S4, it's not a it's not a direct upgrade. It's not like an enhancement package. We have to do a migration, basically, or fresh installation, and then migrate data over. So it's not a direct upgrade. It's more a migration. But if we do that, you know, our our end users still have to use their transactions. If someone works in finance or you know or in materials, they still have to enter material, maintain material, master, maintain and register vendor invoice, and so on. So the function doesn't go away. What will happen is there's a change in the application because the change of the data model and change of the architecture, which means there will be new transactions that need to be authorized and certain transactions, for example, to create banks. Today, traditionally we do that in, in transaction FI01. That's not available anymore in S4. That will only be available through a Fiori app. So with S4, Fiori, Fiori becomes more important. It's not necessarily mandatory to implement Fiori with S4 HANA. But since there's a lot of functionality specifically built for Fiori, simplified in Fiori, it makes a lot of sense to also consider Fiori. And like I said, certain applications, they, they're only available in Fiori. So with S for HANA, a lot of companies, they have to talk about Fiori and at the end of the day, have to deploy and install Fiori as well. Also for, with S for HANA, um, you know, there's, like I said, there's new and changed functionality. That's the one um, aspect of it. That's changed to a system architecture, but then the new UI or the new user interface, that new user experience, that's really focused on on Fiori. So a lot of the development in user interface and uh, interfaces are going to Fiori. So that's why we have to talk about Fiori more specifically. When we look into Fiori, 
some of you might have seen it or at least seen a couple of screenshots. Some of you might already use it. Um, when we look at it from a from a end user perspective, and I just want to jump into a Fiori in, in just a second here. Um, what we can see when we log on to Fiori, we basically see the launch pad. So that's basically the, the, the home page. That's the middle section here where I can see the apps that I'm authorized to. There can be different links and so on. But then we also have different areas that we can click on. Like we have like a me area. Um, you know, for example, here in, in this version here, if I click on my on my user, then the from the left hand side it will pop in where I where I have you know more information about myself, different settings I can do. But I also have an app finder where I can find all the apps, all the Fury apps I'm authorized for. Um, on the right hand side, you have a notification area. If you receive a workflow and needs to be approved, that will, for example, pop up in the notification area. Or if, if you if you enable chatting and someone chats, you know, sends you a message, that for example, something will pop up in, in the notification area. What's important in the in the launch pad is basically from an authorization perspective, how do we authorize those tiles? Um, the tiles are now called cards. So you will see throughout the presentation, um, they're either cards or tiles, you know, SAP, they, they, they like to change names. So whenever there's tiles, it's it's similar to cards. It's just, um, you know, from a, from, a, from, a, from a terminology perspective, what, what changed there. What's important with, with um, Fiori, and we will get into that in, here in just a second, is we're authorizing applications through catalogs. Um, that's basically, that the catalog basically authorizes an app. So for example, if I have an app here like manage accountants, that must be part of a catalog that I have assigned to the user. Then for, for display purposes on the homepage for the end user, we can also authorize um, different groups. That's called Fiori groups. That's what we can see here in, in the horizontal. That user, for example, has two groups. One is useful apps. The other, the other one is internal sales representative. And those are app uh, groups that you know come with with you know a number of of um, of apps like you can see down here the useful apps uh, group has multiple apps here but basically they they have to be authorized through a catalog so that's important to just you know understand but we'll get into that in the more detail so just to you know sum up again summarize that so we have three different areas in the launchpad we have the me area where you know I can do certain things about my my account change some settings and so on. Um, what's mostly used by the user is that app finder where I can find all the apps in Fiori that I'm that I'm authorized for. So even even if they're not popping up through a group, if they're not assigned to a group, I can still find them if I have the authorizations through a catalog. We'll get back to that here in just a second. And then the the primary um, uh, screen is the home page where I can basically see all my applications. Again, you know we can group them through the groups, but basically on the on the home page that's where I can see. Um, all the applications I'm authorized for. And then on the right hand side, it's also like toggle in, toggle off. Basically, we have the notification area that you know we can do certain workflows items, you know, to approve, reject, or, or chat notifications that can pop in through that through that um, notification area on the right hand side. Um, like I said, um, important with Fiori is from an authorization perspective that we have to authorize a catalog and we have to authorize groups. Important to understand here, um, the authorizations basically, whether I can run or whether I can even see um, an app in Fiori in the launchpad is all based on the catalog. So in the catalog, I, I, there's um, SAP standard catalogs that are delivered, but you know we have to basically build our own um, you know, cu custom business catalogs at the end of the day. Um, but into the catalog, we basically put the apps we want. So if, if I have an app like, create bank might be an app that's something i add to a catalog a catalog can have multiple apps like i'm i'm, I'm showing it here the, in this example here i have three uh, sorry six different um, apps represented as a card here and then basically what i can do for grouping purposes and for display purposes on that user front page i can build different groups so for example here for my catalog sales manager i can build a group that's called reporting i can build another group that's called internal sales and then in that reporting, I take a tile or a card here, an application like card one here from that sales manager catalog. And then I add another card um, and to, then to my other group, I add maybe card three, card four. And now if the user logs on to Fiori and we authorize the catalog and the two groups, 
what basically happens is that the user on the on the on the landing page will see the reporting and the internal sales and then the applications underneath important to understand we can see i have four applications in the groups but the catalog comes with the six so card five and card six which are two applications they're not shown in any of the two um, groups but the user will still be authorized for those two as well they will not pop up on on the home on the on the home page but again the user can can access them with that i just want to quickly jump into the system just to just to show you um if i i just have to log on here for a second and just let me get my my password here um if you log on this is just now uh you know um oops that's always the the, the demo effect that doesn't work ah my bad sorry um i'm just now logging on to um to an ihg system which is actually the identity access governance um in the cloud but you know here we, we can see um the latest fiori which is fiori 3.0 um and as soon as i'm authenticated i should see the the launch pad and this is always when we do a demo that's why i don't like to do it for whatever reason it's not going there just give me a second let's try that again Yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's always the demo, demo the demo that is, is super slow. But again, we can see here so that this is my this is my uh, home page, it's the launch pad. Um, the me area on, on 3.0 on the latest Fiori changed to the right. So if I want to go to the me area, I can do it on the right. Um, but important here, you can see here in the horizontal, these are my groups. So I have a group like administration, I have a group reports, access analysis, role design. So I have different groups. Um, and you can see here we have two, four, six, seven different groups. And if I want to see what, are, what catalogs I have, I can go to that app finder, for example. So if I go to the app finder, I can see the catalogs. And then here I can see I basically have two catalogs. I have a catalog administration and I have a catalog role designer. And, you know, the, the seven groups I have basically consume the applications out of, the, of those two catalogs. And we can also see here that CBR simulation simulator app is basically added to the role designer group. So I can also, if personalization is activated, I can also you know, change the apps here um, if I want to. But again, important is the groups basically just display the apps on the on the home page. The authorizations for the app come from the catalog. So even if it's not displayed here, I could still um, you know, access an app through the app finder. That's important to understand. So to rephrase that, the catalog basically contained the Fiori apps. Um, what we try to do with those catalogs, SAP delivers technical catalogs and sometimes business catalogs. We'll get into details what that means in, in here in just a second. But basically as a customer, when we implement Fiori, we want to create our own so-called business catalog. So we, 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 we built them in our own um, namespace. And then basically in those catalogs, we best practice approach is to build them um, following a job function approach. Um, and we put all the apps into that business catalog that are required for you know for 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 a job for you know a business function um, at the end of the day then we can also do build groups that's more for display purposes so the user has a simplified view on the launch pad um, and then you know in the groups we can basically consume an app from from a catalog can be you know we can be in in the same group we can we can use um apps from from multiple catalogs if we want to um, not always recommended but we, we, we possibly could um, but important whenever i then authorize a group i also have to authorize the catalog because the catalog at the end of the day brings the the authorizations what i was just showing um, before how does it look like from an architectural perspective so we know we have to build the groups and the catalogs and i'll show you how and where we do that in just a second but just to understand the architecture why that's important so the the end user basically locks onto the fury launchpad the Fiori Launchpad um, then basically talks with the backend and frontend server. Um, there's different deployment scenarios. We can have an embedded scenario where the frontend and the backend server are one system. If we have it uh, like a like a, a more a central hub approach, it's called central hub approach. We can also have one frontend server, which is one system, and then have a, a dedicated backend server, like for example, an S4HANA system or an ECC 
um, and have them uh, physically separated. So either is possible. Um, the web dispatcher is basically just used to, uh, with in, in the context of Fiori, um, you know, to handle the HTTP requests, the OData um, calls basically, and can also do like serve as a, as a load balancer, you know, to, to, to balance the load if you have multiple front end servers and so on. Um, what does it basically mean? So in the Fiori Launchpad, the user sees the app. There's different types of apps available. Um, when it's a true Fiori app, it's a UI5 app. So that's the new, um, that's a, a truly built Fiori app is a UI5 app. We then also have, and that's what we can do, we can also build legacy apps. So for example, for um, transactions that where, where there's no replacement or no app, in, in, in no, no true Fiori app, no UI5 app, for example, transaction PFCG, the approval generator. There's no such app available in Fiori, but we could we could build a legacy app that basically represents PFCG. So basically it still calls PFCG and it will still be PFCG. It just looks Fiori-like. It's basically just, you know, it enables, it looks like Fiori, but at the end of the day, it's, it's calling transaction PFCG. So there's no specific UI5 app for PFCG. Both apps need to be authorized. So if you have a legacy app, we still have to authorize um, the transaction code like PFCG. <coughs> Excuse me. If it's a UI5 app, then we have to authorize the OData services. <coughs> and that's now where it gets a little bit complex and a little bit um, you know, more into depth. Um, so the communication with Fiori apps, they, they happen through OData, uh, OData services. We have different services um, for the front end and the back end server that need to be authorized. And I'll just uh, jump to the, to the next slide here. So basically, the app, um, whether it's a card or a tile, however we call it, the app basically, um, you know, is displayed in the Fiori Launchpad through a group, and that you know that that application comes from a catalog, and in that catalog we have a target mapping. The target mapping is very important. We'll get to that uh, in just a minute, what that really means and how we can get to the, those target mappings, because that target mapping is basically the configuration that knows which app to call. So basically that's the, you know, the, the connection between the app that we see and then the program at the end of the day that's being called. The communication, like I said, happens um, through OData, OData um, services. And there's two different types of OData services we can see it on, on the right hand side. So on the front end server, what I have to authorize so that the user can see the tile, we have to authorize the IWSG uh, OData service. It's type IWSG. I always remember the G stands for, I always say it stands for a gateway because gateway is my front end. And then on the back end, I have also an OData service, which is the IWSV. And this is, I just call it the server or the service that's basically my backend. So we have to be able to differentiate the SG and the SV um, OData service. Important on the front end server, I have to authorize the SG that basically allows the end user to see um, the tile. So that's, you know, like, like in, 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 in ABAP authorization, that would be like ST code to some extent. So whether I can run the transaction or not, that's, that's, that's basically on the front end. And then on the back end with the IWSV, that's where the business authorizations come into play. So again, on the front end, we just basically say whether the user can see the tile or not. But then on the back end, we can we, we define what within that tile the user can see. Can he change? Can he display? Can he display a, a certain company code or another? That's all on the back end. So that's 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 all back end authorizations that we still have to build. From a role building, and we'll get back to that in just a little bit. From a role building, you know, the roles are still being built in PFCG. So we, it's, it's, a, it's a standard technical role, a single role, for example, that we build in PFCG, where we have to authorize the catalog, the group, and then those OData services. Um, on the front end, it must be the IWSG, and on the back end, it must be the IWSV, along with other transactions, web DIMP applications that are also required. Like, for example, as I said before, with a legacy app, I have to authorize the, the transactions. Um, in a central hub deployment where I have a front end server and a back end server, and that's two different systems, um, I have to build a role in the front end and I have to build a role in the back end. Again, the front end role, pretty straightforward. It's just the OData service. There's no business authorizations. That's all on the back end. That's, that's, that's important. If I have 
uh, an embedded deployment where I have the front end and the back end server on the same system, so it's not it's not physically separated. Then I can I can I can go with just one role where I basically authorize the front end and the back end authorizations in the same role. There's different design approaches. You know, some companies they they still even in in, a, in an embedded deployment they say I build a specific role for front end authorizations and a specific role for back end authorizations. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. The user needs both authorizations, the front end and the back end, so that the user can ultimately run an application in Fiori. When we build Fiori authorization, like I said, we're still doing it in, in PFCG. Um, but what we have to do before we even can build a role, I mean, we can always go with SAP standard delivered um, catalogs and groups. If you want to you know, use them, that's, that's possible. It's like using SAP standard roles in, in ABAP. Um, that's not recommended. That's not best practice. We shouldn't do that. So we always have to start first building catalogs and the groups um, in Fiori. So we can always consume information that's there. For example, like I said before, SAP delivers catalogs, SAP delivers the groups um, that we can repurpose. We can use them as a reference and then build our own catalogs. But that's still something that needs to be done you know, from, from a best, best, best practice perspective. That's a mandatory step to do. There's different tools available. We'll get back to those in, in just a bit. So we have, like, for example, the Launchpad Designer, where we can build groups and catalogs. We can do target mappings in the catalogs. Um, we have uh, the new tools available, uh, like the Content Manager, um, the App Manager, and so there's different tools available that help us build catalogs, build groups, and do the configuration. Um, today we're not going to talk about um, the activation. So there's like there's also activation that needs to be done from a you know from a service perspective. So in transaction SICF, there is you know, certain services that need to be activated. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll point it out briefly in the content manager, but we're not we're not talking about you know the rapid activation uh, that's that's available. That will be in the next call because that goes you know already too it's already too technical. We don't want to cover that today. That's going to be in the next call. So today we just really want to give you an overview of how do we build those catalogs in the groups, what 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 tools are available to do that. Once we have the groups and catalogs built, then we can basically start building our roles in PFCG. And in PFCG, like I said, you know, we have to deal with the front-end authorizations, we have to deal with the back-end authorizations, depending on my deployment scenario, whether I have an embedded um, approach or I have a, a, a central hub approach, I have to build roles on, on two systems, or I just build them on one. If I go with the embedded, which is the, the recommended approach by SAP, um, then we just can't, we basically can build one role. Um, and that's also important, um, what we also need in Fiori is channel authorization. So, uh, and I have an example role uh, in the slides here, just for your reference. So there's also basic authorizations that are required for the end users that they can even start the Fiori launchpad. So there's like, you know, just a few authorizations that are required. Also for the communication, because there's trusted communication through RFC between the front end and the back end that needs to be authorized. And um, I have to, I have to, those uh, authorizations specifically listed in the slide deck. So that needs to be done. So let's look into the tools. I want to give you a brief overview of what the tools are. And then we, we also want to talk about how can we build those roles in PFCG, what's the approach we should take, um, and so on. Here, just for your reference, I don't want to go through them. It's this is really just that base role, basic authorizations that are needed on the front end server and on the back end server if you split them um, with you know authorizations that are, that are needed. But basically, those old data services and transactions are required. So if someone wants to start a Fiori launchpad, that's a transaction code they can run in the sub GUI so that the launchpad will start. And that's just basic authorization that we have to give. When we when we start talking about and, and you know there's different design approaches, like I said, um, and we'll talk about that more in the next webinar as well. But when we start building the catalog. So let's say we we know we 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 move to S for Hana, we implement Fiori, and I want to you know bring certain user groups to Fiori. Certainly not everyone will go on Fiori right away because there's not like I said, not everything is available in Fiori as a as a native Fiori app. So certain things are still in the GUI. That also means certain certain users will still remain on in on the GUI. Like our basis, our security team, they, they will still remain in the GUI. Um, but let's say I want to build or I want to, you know, certain groups of users. I want to, I want to build uh, Fiori authorizations and, you know, do that and, and go that route. Then one of the one of the best sources for information is the Fiori Apps Library. 
I have the link down here or if you just go on Google and you, and you search for Fiori Apps Library, you will get right here. Um, in that Fiori Apps Library, we have more than 12,000 apps available that are UI5 applications specifically built in Fiori um, that we know that we can use. What's important is when we go in and we search for, for, for an app, and uh, I don't want to go there, it takes too long, but if you search for an app, like for example, you search for create vendor because you, know, you want to replace that transaction and maybe the users they, they 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 should they should just use Fiori. So let's just you know search for a, for for an app. That for example here create vendor. Important when we start implementing. So you search for the app. We can go into the details. There's you know product features available, and then there's the implementation information. And that implementation information is very important for us as a security person because that gives us all the details that we need in order to build the roles and the catalogs and the groups but ultimately the roles that authorizes the end users. Um, important, there's different versions of the app available. So if depending on your, on your S4 HANA release, if you're on 1909 or you're, or you're on 1809, um, you know, a little bit outdated, you have to select the right version because the, the services and so on, they, they might change. So always select the right version um, that you're on. Then in the implementation information section, we also have a section called configuration. And in that configuration, we have the technical conf configuration and also then the business catalogs that SAP delivers that app in. So for example, that create vendor application comes with a technical catalog. And here we can see that it might be a little bit small, but here basically we have three different catalogs uh, listed that contain that app create vendor. From a naming um, convention, uh, pers or from a yeah, naming uh, convention perspective, the technical catalogs, they start with sub underscore TC for technical catalog. That's basically our source. So if we build a custom catalog, we always want to use the technical catalog as our source. Every app should, should come at least with in, in one a technical catalogs. Sometimes we also have business catalogs. Like in this example here for create vendor, there's different business catalogs available. And from a naming uh, convention perspective, it's, it's, it's SAP underscore module and then underscore BC for business catalog. And then, you know, what it is. So what's the difference just from an understanding uh, perspective? The technical catalog is basically grouped um, by modules. So here we can, you know, the, the apps should basically be grouped by a module. So if it's the same module then the, in, and the app is in the same module, then basically those apps are in the same technical catalog. Sometimes there's more than one, um, that's possible. The business catalogs are more job functions. You know, if I have a, a specific job function and, and SAP groups those already in, in a job function, then sometimes, not always, we also have business catalogs just for us as a reference to see what apps could go together. So if I have, I don't know, if I have healthy and, and, and safety and risk management, and you know, there could be different transactions from different modules, um, that's in the business catalog. But if I then go to a technical catalogs, that's basically apps that are in the same module. They are pretty much similar apps rather than here. It's more from a job perspective. Like I said, best practice approach um, is always to build our own catalogs in our own um, um, namespace. Um, so we define a naming convention and build our own catalogs. And when we build them, we can always use the technical catalog as a reference. So we don't have to you know, reinvent the wheel and do everything from, from scratch. We can basically use that information, the apps and all the, the target mappings and all that information that comes with the app and repurpose that into our, into our um, custom business catalogs. And like I said before, different design approaches. Very often we, we follow a job-based approach or we follow our um, ABAP authorization approach, authorization uh, concept that we already have and build the apps around that. Very often that's a job a job based a function approach and um, I would always follow the same approach also in Fiori but you're entirely it's entirely up to you how you want to build them the recommendation is always and it's strongly recommended to build custom um, catalogs then basically you know the apps you add to your custom catalog if you want to keep them component or model neutral or you want to mix them in chops that's entirely up to you again the apps library that's the starting point so here we can basically see the, the technical catalog and the business catalog. But then also, and I have that just here, that's also in the apps library, we also see the target mapping. 
And uh, like I said before, the target mapping basically defines what that app can really do. So I might have an app, like for example, create vendor that has that allows for multiple functions. So for example, depending on the target mapping, which I, you know, that I can define in the catalog, I can say the semantic object or the semantic action is either create vendor or edit vendor. So depending on how I how I define that app, I can I allow the end user to create a vendor or edit or change a vendor. That's something that can be achieved, you know, for example, with the target mappings. And that's information that we can get from the apps library. Also, in some cases, and, and Jennifer can, can talk more about that maybe later, um, you know, for, for certain drill downs that I have within applications that might require additional target mappings, you know, the, an app where I can see certain data and then I want to do a drill down for that drill down to enable that or to allow that, I have to authorize different target mappings and so on. So there's a lot of things with the target mappings that we have to know and understand and you know, requires a little bit of, of, of experience here as well to, to know all the caveats. But at the end of the day, the, the Fiori apps library will give us all that information that we need um, you know, to build those catalogs and build those apps and the target mapping in those catalogs. That's important. The apps, li the apps uh, library, if you go there, um, if you don't know where to start, that's also often a question, you know, how do I know which apps are available and which apps do I use? There's 12,000 of them. What, what, which ones do I need? Um, a good starting point is the, is the apps uh, recommendation. So if you enter the apps library on the left-hand side, there will be that, that button here, get sub your app recommendation. And what you can basically do, you can basically upload a text file that just contains your, your um, transaction codes. And then you can see if there's a replacement or an app that covers that functionality of that transaction um, in, 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 as a Fiori app. So for example, I can upload like a text file like here. You don't really have to upload the user data. I just wanted to show that. You know, I could, for example, use my usage information from if I have GRC, I can use the action usage report. I could use the statistical usage data in ERP like ST03N, um, you know, where I can see what transactions were executed by my users because I don't want to look at all 500,000 T codes. I just want to look at the ones that are that, that being used. And then I can see if there's an app that, for example, replaces or enhances F501, Migo, and so on. If I upload that file, the app's recommendation uh, will give me an output, like seen here, where it will basically, and that doesn't ne necessarily match here, um, where I can see what's the app here um, that replaces a certain transaction that I'm that I uploaded. And then there's a, there's also relevance. If there's a high relevance, like here, it's basically one, two, or three. If it's if it's a relevance of three, that means that um, Fiori application um, basically has the full functionality of that of that transaction code. I cannot see the transaction code in this in this screenshot here. Uh, what we can do when once we upload an entire list of T codes, let's say you upload a thousand T codes, you will get a lot of apps here, um, and those you can you can also download. So if you select here all the apps, you can just press the, the button on the top left, um, select them all, and then go to that um, uh, preference or settings wheel here, and then you can you know download directly that into Excel with a lot of a lot of different columns. So there's much more than here where you can see what's the what's the replacement transaction and so on. Um, and, and that can be downloaded. And that's always what I recommend. Download that list and then process it in Excel. But at least you then know, okay, for F501, there's an app called Create Bank, gives you the number. So every Fiori app has a number like the one here, like F1657 or F1666. That's basically a unique number for the app. That's what you have in Excel. And with that number, then you basically can go back to the apps library and find more information. So that this is a good starting point if you just want to see what what Fury apps are available um, based on usage or what my users are currently doing today. That's that's good to remember. And then from here, like if you, like I said, if you want to implement certain apps, then you get all the information in that in that Fury apps library. Once we have that knowledge and we know which apps we want to build and we know the technical catalogs that we want to repurpose or we even maybe even know a business catalog, but like I said, we always want to start off the technical catalog, then we can start um, building our own content. There's different tools available. Um, there's the content manager, there's the launch, uh, the launchpad designer, and there's the app manager as uh, three main tools to build and design um, my catalogs and my groups. 
like I said before, before we can build and, and, and implement Fiori, there's, there's certain things that need to be activated. There's a, a rapid activation checklist that we can use. We'll talk about that in the next webinar, what there's available. But basically every you know Fiori application, there's a there's a, a service in SICF that needs to be activated. All that stuff you know needs to be done before we I mean we can build the catalogs, but that app wouldn't wouldn't run because the, the service is not active. So stuff like that needs to be done. We'll talk about that in the next webinar. Um, but for example, the content manager um, helps me do certain things or find certain issues before the issues pop up. So for example, in the content manager, it's basically a new tool um, where we can uh, you know build our own content. So we basically can use SAP standard catalogs. We can search them, for example, in a, a technical catalog. And then we can, for example, copy them. If, if I want to copy that catalog and copy it over to my own um, customer namespace, similar that we do in PFCG with an SAP standard, or we might just copy it and then you know build our own version of it. That can be done in the content manager. What we can also do, we can run, um, we can check all the services. For example, there's a check. So if I have a catalog that has 80 different apps, I can must check whether all those services behind those apps are activated. Like I just said before. They need to be activated. They're not always they're not they're not activated by default, so it needs to be done. If I missed some or didn't do uh, you know a, a proper activation, with the content manager, I can run certain checks and make sure um, everything is is activated. I can also do I can display uh, the, the tile target mapping so I can see what are the mappings and so on. I can I can uh, you know mass assign uh, mappings and so on. Uh, and I can search different content in here. Uh, what I cannot do, I cannot create any apps. So the content manager doesn't allow me to create any custom apps. Let's say I, I want to create you know, a, a UA5 app that one of my developers uh, built and I want to add it to a catalog. That's not possible in the content manager. Also, if I want to do like a legacy app, let's say I want to do like, like PFCG because there's no app, I just want to enable that transaction to be, um, you know, uh, that can be accessed to the Fiori Launchpad. Uh, like like building a, a legacy app, um, that's also not possible in the content manager. So here it's really just the the, the, the catalogs that I can run some checks, I can create catalogs, I can assign the, the the applications to the catalogs with the target mappings. That can be done, um, but I, for example, I cannot build apps in the content manager. For that, we have the app manager. And like I said, in the next webinar, we'll go into more detail. We then also have the Fiori Launchpad Designer um, that used to be the first tool that, that, that was around. Then you know the App Manager and, and the and the Content Manager were, were introduced. They're also um, sooner or later going to replace the Launchpad Designer, as far as I'm aware. So that that's also from from that perspective. But with the Launchpad Designer, we can also you can see it here in the screenshot. We can basically access our catalogs and our groups. We can create them. We can you know create our own ones. What we cannot do, for example, we cannot copy. Um, a technical catalog into our own namespace. We can certainly create a new one and then copy every single tile, basically, like, like building a reference into our custom uh, catalog, but we cannot again, copy the entire one at once. For that, we have to use the content manager. Um, but at, at the same time, with the Launchpad Designer, we can build the groups, we can build the catalogs, we can do the target mappings, so all that can be done. We can build um, new, new tiles, new applications, all that can be done in the Launchpad Designer. But when it comes to mass tools or you know being more efficient, then we have to switch over to the uh, content manager or the app manager. And then also last but not least, the app manager itself, it's a it's a fairly new tool so that, that you know came now strongly with S4 HANA 2020, which just got released. So very new here. Um, also, that's been basically really to create the app. So if you want to create custom applications, legacy apps, stuff like that, that can be done in the app manager. So here another way, another tool um, you know, to, to better build apps and, and then assign them um, and so on and prepare them to be assigned and so on. Or if you want to must change stuff like that, all that um, can be done in the App Manager. So these are the, three, the main three tools that we have to be aware of. I have a couple of links at the end of the presentation as well if you want to learn more about those, um, you know, a couple of blog posts that you can follow or then in, in the next meeting. When we at the end of the day, we're, we're talking about authorizations, right? Fiori authorizations, we, but at the same time, we also have to build the catalogs and we have to you know, build the groups. And then at the, at the end of the day, we have to authorize them. So like I said before, the Fiori authorization concept should always follow the ABAP concept that we have. So you know, 
if you have a solid ABAP concept, I would follow the same approach with Fiori. You don't have to you know, reinvent the wheel, just use what you have. Um, at the end of the day, the, the role management will be in PFCG, so we, we're, we can still build single roles, we can do derivations of single roles, so like a master derived, that's possible. We can group um, single roles into the composite roles for, you know, pro, um, you know, to simplify provisioning, depending on your design, that's entirely possible. We have to build, depending on, on the deployment scenario, remember, either we have to build front-end or end uh, backend authorizations, depending how you do that, can be one role or has to be two roles on two different systems. Um, that's just depending on your architecture. But at the end of the day, it's a technical single role that we have to add um, the authorizations. Important, um, as always, when we when we talk about role building, um, everything that goes into a role has to be added to the role menu. So so we remember from 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 ABAP. Traditionally, when we when we when we add a, a transaction to a role, we always want to add it to the role menu. The reason for that is because only if we add a transaction to the role menu, only then we get the SA24 proposals. So an SA24 is basically where you know I know that that the carries the authorization um, proposals for for the transaction, and those are being you know proposed into the authorization profile. That's that's exactly the same with Fiori. So when we are when we build a role. We go through the menu. In the menu, we're not adding a transaction. We're now adding a catalog and a group. So basically, we have to add the group and the catalog to that to the role menu. And that group, or basically the catalog, then knows or should know um, the 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 objects behind. So basically, the front end and the back end services. Those will come when we add it properly through the menu. And we'll see that here in just a second. So that's important. Same approach. As with traditional ABAP authorizations. For those of you that are not very familiar with the concept of SA24, just to maybe rephrase it, so the SA24 is the backbone of authorizations. And in SA24, that's the authorization uh, database for our applications. Um, basically, I want to propose um, all the authorization objects and, if possible, values through SA24. So when I build a role, I have the proposals there. I just have to fill in the blanks, the open values. I still have to, you know, maintain in the role if there's different scenarios and, and I cannot maintain an SA24, then I at least want to have the object proposed and I make the, the adjustments of the values within the role, within the authorization profile. So in SA24, we always want to define the lowest common denominator that every use case of that application has in common. With, with uh, Fiori and with the um, the Fiori applications, those um, you know, especially with the backend services where we have business applications, SAP did a much better job in my in, in my understanding and in my uh, experience than with traditional um, transactions because now with the Fiori um, with those OData services for the backend, we have very good or we have at least a, a, a good set of of proposals already there. So we have a very good um, Proposal like a foundation basically. We still have to auto op optimize that and, and, and make it better. It's not perfect by no means, but it's much better than what we had in the past. Why do we do SA24? Why is it important? Like always, that's you know to, to minimize the risk, to in, you know, increase security, but then also from a transparency perspective, so that I have the very use list, I have a reference back from authorization to an application. Um, that's important when we run SOD scans, critical access, or over, you know over authorizations. If we if we ever change a role, if we remove certain transactions, we want to make sure the authorizations go out. And from that perspective, from a stability perspective, we always want to build roles consistently through the menu to really leverage that SO24. And also from a maintenance perspective, if there's an update and there's a change, like you know from 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 traditional ABAP. Whenever there's an update, we update SA24, SAP brings those updates. Uh, yeah, when we do an upgrade, for example, and then we can reintroduce those changes or bring those changes into our roles through the SA24 mechanism that we can, for example, do through SA25. Um, just to show you here an example, might be a little bit of a messy screenshot, but basically here we have a role. It's called financial accounting. We can see in the role menu, so I'm in the in the menu tab, I can see there's different um, catalogs added or groups added. There's a catalog, catalog, there's a group. And then we can see here there's one catalog that has multiple different um, OData services. We can see the IWSG. So this is a role that's on that where we have an embedded scenario. So it's basically front and back end in one role. So we have the SG and the SV um, object. 
again when we when we then go to the authorization tab and we do that read over merge new use the expert mode to get the proposals from sa24 i get them traditional like 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 we like we, are, we like we know from 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 transactions um like for example here object fbkb f uh, book which is the, the you know the the accounting document the, the authorization object for company codes we know that from from erp from ecc um what i then have i have objects that are standard so basically proposed directly that way from s24 and we can see if you click on the very used list i can then see okay that object comes from that application and that application here is called fac underscore financial statement service and this financial statement i can see what's what's proposed and that's basically is the link back to the application so i can see from which catalog brings that application and so on and that's only possible if we build the roles again following best practice you know always with s24 s24 updates i have just a screenshot here on the right that's from s24 so if you want to update um uh, uh, uh data service because there might be objects missing or you have to add something whatever or you want to define certain values um, you have to pick the TID service, that's a TID service basically, and then there's an object type IWSV or IWSG for the front end, but basically we're dealing with backend authorizations, that's really where we have the business authorizations that we have to um, deal with. So we, we, we choose the IWSV and then we, we have to search for the object name, which is basically that the application, that OData service application um, that's there. So that's, that's also important with Fiori. We still have to follow the same approach when it comes to authorization as it did with, transaction, with, with traditional transactions. Hope that makes sense. Just to um, give you a little bit of an outlook as well into the future and what we will be discussing next time. So with um, S4HANA 2020, um, there's enhancements done in the, in the content manager so we can do more things with, with the content manager. I don't have a screenshot yet because I don't have. We're just in the process of getting the system ready to, you know, get the the use cases going and and, and show next time. There's also a lot of enhancement in the app manager. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the ultimate goal is to is that the app manager and the content manager will replace the the, the launchpad designer. I think that's what I read on one of the blogs. I can be mistaken, but I think that's what I read. Um, and that also looks like the way it's going because a lot of functionality and must tools are in those in those two tools. What's also new and that's on the agenda is that the groups um, are planned to be replaced with spaces and pages. And that's always, you know, to confuse you guys. The, the biggest problem is with the, with the groups. Um, let's say that, you know, if, if, if you do like a Fiorization where we, you know, we move users entirely to Fiori and we, you know, and they still have their 50 transactions or apps that they need. Um, some might be legacy apps, some might be, um, you know, true Fiori apps. Um, and we authorize them with catalogs and the groups. And if the users have too many groups, it gets very crowded. So if on the next screen, we can we can see we can. No, before I go there, let me just change my screen. Uh, and for sure, I'm locked out. Um, the problem is with if I have too many groups, then in the horizontal where I can see the groups on on the launch pad on the on the home page, you know I have to horizontally scroll because if there's more than I don't know, 10 groups or so. Then I have to scroll horizontally. It's very messy, especially if a lot of groups are assigned, and makes it not very user friendly. So what SAP tries to do with with in the future, um, instead of authorizing groups, we can authorize spaces um, uh, and and pages. It's a, a typo here. And basically, what we can do, and I can show it on on the next screen, is basically we we can build spaces, like for example, accounts receivable. That's the space, and within that space, we define different pages. And a page could be like an overview page. That's basically our groups to, that we have today. Like we can see here, um, and then you know, and then basically from a from a user experience perspective, they can then like have a, a drill down here where they can click the menu, and then they can um, you know sort it easier that way. Versus today with the groups, if you have like here four different um, call them, let's call them subgroup or pages here, um, you know, they, they would be in the horizontal, and then we would have a long list. And we would have to horizontally scroll here so that really will simplify that or, or enhance that user experience for our end users if we use um, the spaces and pages so that's something entirely new uh, will be very interesting from an optimization perspective it will not change we still have to authorize the catalogs but then going forward we have to authorize those pages or basically the space 
um, for, for the end users rather than the group. So the, the spaces and pages will basically replace the group. But that's really for the future, just, just to give you, just to make you aware of that, or if you come across that. The biggest challenges, and you know, we're, we only have five minutes left. So the biggest challenges with Fiori is, Fiori is, is definitely, especially if you go to S for HANA and you know, we, we, we want to implement Fiori, is very often that it, we're doing a Fiorization. We call it Fiorization, not sure if it's an official term. Um, and that basically means that you know when if, if we start bringing users into into fury and like i said we, we probably start out with certain user groups before we do like a big bang right we just start with certain user groups but once users are working with fury and fury has a lot of advantages especially from a user experience perspective because it's simplified it makes it easier and and it's, it's definitely easier than the sub gui um we're, we're admins we're different but for our end users GUI is always a little bit tricky. So there's a big advantage from that perspective. And what we want to avoid is that someone has to do something in Fiori and then to complete a task, go to the sub GUI. So we basically bring everything into Fiori. That means we build legacy apps. We want to enable them and make them, you know, Fiori um, uh, yeah, viewable. So basically we can then run a transaction that, that, that there is no Fiori app directly in, 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 in the, from the launch pad. That's what we call Fiorization. So basically, we're bringing entire business processes into Fiori, and that you know then is definitely uh, you know uh, uh, yeah a good size project to just get that done. Also, um, we're, we're still missing some some um, automa automation tools or, or or migration tools or however you want to call them to to build those apps. So there's still a lot of manual tasks uh, that we have to do. Um, especially for the ones of you that, that know the Launchpad Designer, it's 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 an ugly tool to work with because it's slow and I cannot really do much because it's, you know it's it's not perfect. With the App Manager and the Content Manager, a lot of things change and improve, but it's still you know a, a slow process. So there's a lot of manual steps still still needed. Um, we still have to define the concept and the, the the catalogs and the groups and build all that. So it's still manual maintenance. Uh, like I said, certain tools now help us do that, but we still have to do it. And then also one big issue is, is, is the authorization debugging. So if a user has an issue, an authorization issue, or cannot run an app or we get an error message, it's not always a true authorization failure. You know, sometimes that's that's a big problem always, and Jenny knows that from, from heart. Um, there's a lot of issues that can happen. And you know, for a user, it's always, oh, it doesn't work. It's, a, it's an authorization problem. But very often, the, the issue is not an authorization. It might be a, bro a browser problem. And I see. I just realized it's 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 cat here, um, it, but it, or it could be a missing service that's not activated, and so on. There's a lot of things that you know when we have to find a root cause that might be a little bit tricky. And that's also something that we want to discuss in the next webinar. How can we do authorization debugging, Fiori? How can we must maintain certain things, and so on. So there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of use cases. There's a lot of things we can do in SAP standard. There's different you know tools available. SAP has a lot of tools available. That's very manual. There's alternate, you know, there's 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 third-party tools that automate and simplify a lot of that. That we want to also specifically have a webinar about that. What can automation tools um, do? Um, but next, in the next webinar, we want to go more into detail. What of what does SAP offer out of the box? App Manager, Content Manager. What can be done? The content activation, rapid uh, deployment activation. What does that mean? What can be done? And so on. And then in in a in, a, in another webinar, we also go into mass tools. With that being said, uh, we have two minutes left. Um, just a few tips and tricks, maybe. Um, I mentioned the different tools. I have certain links here as well. The Launchpad Content Manager is a very good tool for you know if you want to mask create and, and copy SAP standard um, catalogs, much better than the Launchpad Designer. Um, the group still must be created in the Launchpad Designer, so we still you know, cannot go around it. That's still something we have to do. Also, when it comes to building custom apps, the target mappings, all that stuff, still in the Launchpad Designer. Um, from an authorization perspective, again, we have to authorize front-end and back-end authorizations depending on your on your on your deployment scenario. Could be two different roles, could be one role. That's just what it is. Um, definitely use the apps library. That's that's the source of knowledge. That's that's what you know. Chen and I, when we do projects, that's where we spend a lot of time in because that gives us all the information. Um, don't be afraid of Fiori. There's nothing um, that we cannot handle. It's still up up. So, or up, from the stage perspective, it's still up up. So we can still use PFCG and the traces and all that stuff. Like I said, we go into more details next time. Um, then really, the only thing we have to understand is building those groups and catalogs. That's, you know, that's something we can easily learn. 
but then the rest and, and the, the big work when it comes to authorizing Fiori will still be the backend authorizations. And for that, we can still use the, the standard tools, tracers. We can use, if you guys use the XCMS for you know automation, test automations and implementation stuff, we can still use that. So that, that's the good news. We can still use the tools that we have. Um, and SAP, you know, they, they always deliver the latest and greatest with rapid activation when it comes to enabling Fiori. There's a lot of things that we can utilize or that we should utilize. And like I said, we go into more details um, in the next webinar. The next webinar we are scheduled for in two weeks, December 17th, same time. If you cannot make it live, just register. We'll send you out the, the recording. Um, that's all about today. So we, we, we will send out the recording um, soon. We don't have time to answer questions live. We'll just follow up by email. So we'll put all the questions in, into, a, into a spreadsheet and we answer them. So we make it available to all of you. So if you have any other questions, just you know, feel free to reach out. We're available. You can set up a call. Um, there's a, a, a blog out there as well that talks about what I was saying today. If you just want to get a good overview, um, that's that blog or then specifically about the App Manager and so on. Just for the SAP blogs, there's very good blogs available. Um, and then here's my, you know, my contact details. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Just send me an email or, or, or call us up. Not a problem. We always uh, try to help. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you again in two weeks when we go into more details with Fiori. Thank you very much for your attention. Jenny, do we want to? I mean, people are probably leaving now, but do we want to answer maybe one, two questions if someone has time and wants, wants to stay? Is there anything that was um, raised um, that you want to no, point we, out? We have some general um, questions uh, for recording or for sending and PDF documents of your presentation, but we have no um, yeah, um, theory specific um, questions today. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. good. Perfect. <laughs> no, definitely. So, like I said, we sent out the recording, so we'll get an email um, in a few hours or maybe tomorrow with the recording. We'll send the, uh, the PDF, the, the presentation, and then also we'll, 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 we'll pick up on the, on the questions and we'll try to answer them um, also in the same email. Perfect. Then I would say, um, yeah, wish you a good rest of your day. Good evening. And, and um, thank you, Jenny, for your, for your support in the background. Yes. <laughs> Bye, Alessandro. Thank you very much.